G. Marshall. Just suppose, for a minute, be arrogant enough to suppose that you are God. Anxious and affectionate in equal proportions, you scrutinize your children, the beings of your creation, to see what they are about. You see them eagerly, industriously, striving to reach the moon and the other planets, while at the same time, they just as eagerly, industriously, devise ways to blow up and annihilate the world you gave them for a home. What would you think? How would you feel if you were God? I don't mind telling you, you've given me quite a jolt. Believe me, I know how you feel. It must have been a shock to you the first time it happened. I thought I'd freaked out completely. So, what's our next move? Where do we go from here? Our mystery drama, The Conspiracy, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Terry Keene. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Proto-Rooter presents... Nothing is more fascinating than the human mind. That inner space compared to which the outer reaches appear simple and accessible... We know very little, really, about our minds, how they work, why one functions better than another, what influences, if any, can be brought to bear upon them. But as studies continue and progress, we are coming to realize that the human mind is an infinitely complex structure and can be, on occasion, a formidable weapon. Listen now to the story called The Conspiracy. Are you serious? Dead serious. But, but it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, it's true enough. Uh, wait a minute. Stanley? Yes, Mrs. Ashton? Uh, hold my call, Stanley. I don't want to be disturbed for... Well, I'll let you know when. You got that? Yes, Mrs. Ashton. Oh, well, now, uh... You want a cigarette? Coffee? Anything? No, thank you. I think I'll have some coffee, if you don't mind. Not at all. I, you've given me quite a jolt, I don't mind telling you. I, I don't... I, well, I, I can't quite grasp what you've been saying. I know how you feel, believe me. Yes, I suppose you do. Must have been a shock to you the first time. I thought I'd freaked out completely. Mm. Well, now, what's the next move? Where do we go from here? Mrs. Ashton, I came to you because... You see, I don't even know where he lives. Oh, I can give you his address. I have his phone number, too. We're in touch from time to time. But that's not enough. I suppose I could just go to see him, walk in unannounced. Would he recognize you, do you think? Oh, I don't think so. It's been almost 20 years, and... Uh, I've been ill. I've changed. You're still very attractive. How old are you? 37. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've got an idea. It might work. Yes, Mrs. Ashton. Uh, Stanley, get me Simon Ashton on the phone, will you please? Uh, uh, Simon Ashton, the photographer? That Simon Ashton? Uh, the very same. Any reason why not? Well, no, no. Well, he also happens to be my ex-husband. Oh. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, get him for me, please, Stanley. Yes, Mrs. Ashton. He's new here. Do you want to tell me what you have in mind? It ought to work. I I think it will work, actually. I have ways of making it work. Once I've um, set it up, though, then you'll have to do your part. You'll, you'll have to take it from there. Oh, I will. If I just knew what you have in mind. Uh, well, wait till I get Simon on the line, you see. Yes, Stanley. I have Mr. Ashton for you, line three. Fine, Stanley. Hello. Mona. Uh, Simon. You called me? Well, indeed I did, my pet. Well, if it's about the alimony, I haven't got it. Oh, I didn't for a moment think you did, Simon. Well, then... I want you to do me a favor. Oh? You 
to do? Yes, there's a young lady sitting in my office. I want you to take some pictures of her. We think right here at the agency she might be right for commercials. You know, all-American housewife sort of thing. She needs a composite she can show around. Mona, you know I don't do that sort of thing anymore. I haven't for ages. But I thought just this once, for me, it you know, wouldn't take up much of your time. Uh, just some candid shots. That's all we use nowadays. Well, then, no retouching. No, 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 of course not. Well... I'll, um, deduct this from the alimony you owe me, which is quite a lot by now, as you very well know. What's her name? You'll do it? Send her over. What's her name? Uh, just a minute. What's your name? Uh, tell him Anne Logan. Her name's Anne Logan, and she'll be right over. What is your name, by the way? Ariane. Ariane Delaunay. Well, here's his address. Ariane Delaunay. He's expecting you. Thank you, Mrs. Ashton. And be sure you let me know what happens, if anything does happen. Oh, I think something will happen. I'm very confident. Oh, yes. Something's bound to happen. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes? I'm Anne Logan. Oh, you're the one Mona called about? Is it all right to come in? Yeah, why not? The sooner we get started, the sooner it'll be over. Well, let's see what you're wearing. Oh, plain shirt waist. Eh? Well, that's good. Where do you want me? Any place. Really? Any place? That's what I said. Just sitting down, standing up? What? Walk around. Just keep moving. Oh. All right. I'll follow you, sort of stalk you. Pay no attention to me. Okay. When I find the right moment, I'll say now. Then what do I do? Well, it doesn't matter what you do, because I'll have my picture. You make it sound so easy. It is easy. Keep moving. Keep moving. Sort of strange. Now, well, that's one. Keep moving. How do you know which is the right moment? Because I'm very good at what I do. Now. Okay, keep moving. Is it all right if I look at you? I don't care what you do. Now. It's awfully nice of you to do this, Mr. Ashton. Yes, it is. Now. I'd sit on the windowsill if you feel like it. Here? Now. This is really fascinating, the way you work. I'm the best portrait photographer in the world. Now. Well, that's enough, don't you think? I could go on indefinitely. Well, I couldn't. You want me to leave? If you would, quietly as you came. All right. You can pick up the proofs tomorrow. I'd like to get them out of here. Somebody else can print them up. Morning or afternoon? Either one, the earlier the better. I'll be here. Early. Come in, come in. How did it go? I haven't seen the proofs yet. I'm on my way over there now. But what do you think? How, how did it feel to you? I think... Good. I think it went very well. Tell me, Anne, or should I call you Ariane? Let's stick to Anne Logan. Forget Ariane Delaunay for the time being. So, tell me how it went. Well, you probably know how he works. You uh, move around, and when he says now, that's the picture... Either he takes it as he says now, or maybe it's a fraction of a second before, I don't know. But it didn't matter anyway, because I knew when he was going to say it. You did? How? It was always that way, when we were close. I always knew what he was thinking. Well, you don't think he recognized you? Oh, not a chance. After all, it's been 20 years, and I was sick for a long time. Oh, excuse me, I, I forgot to shut off the phone. Uh, Mona Ashton here. Mona, this is Simon. Oh, yes. It's Simon. Uh, what is it, Simon? Mona, that girl you sent me, that Ann Logan. Ann Logan. Oh, yes, yes. What about her? She's supposed to look at the proof sometime today. Oh, is she? I want you to get hold of her and tell her not to come. 
Oh, look, Simon, I have no way of getting in touch with her. I thought she was a friend of yours. Oh, no, just someone I know slightly. Just somebody looking for work. I see so many of those. Well, the proofs aren't ready. They're just not ready. Well, you will have to explain that to her in person. Sorry, Simon. Oh, no, don't hang up. Well, Anne, Ariane Delaney, I don't know what happened yesterday, but something certainly did. If I were you, I'd get right on over there and make him show you the proofs. Go away. Leave me alone. I need my pictures, Mr. Ashton. No, you don't. You don't. I have to have them. Well, you, 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 you can't have them. Go away. Leave me alone. At least let me look at them. No, no. Mr. Ashton, your wife isn't going to like this when I tell her. She's got nothing to do with it. And I'm going to tell her. I will tell her, Mr. Ashton. Thank you. Where are the proofs? Over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well? Well? I think they're very good. Good? Very good, indeed. Well, of course they're good. They couldn't be anything else but good. Then why are you so upset? Are you trying to be funny, Miss Ann Logan? I know, not at all. You mean you can't see? You can't see that in every last one of these photographs you're crying? Oh. Oh, so I am. I wonder why. Well, you tell me why. Look, in the first one, there's just a tear in one eye. And then in both. And then rolling down your cheeks. And in the last one, your whole face is wet. Isn't that strange? Strange? It's weird. It's bizarre. What's this trick you're trying to run on me? You weren't crying in the studio yesterday. I'd have known if you were crying. I'd have noticed it. Wouldn't be possible for me not to notice. And now look. Look here, Miss Ann Logan. I want you to come back tomorrow for another sitting. I could do that. Well, you'd better do that. And believe me, tomorrow I'll watch you like a hawk. <laughs> Simon Ashton, so confident, so assured, wrapped so snugly in the cocoon of his sturdy egotism, fate has played him a dirty trick, and the walls of his cocoon are beginning to crack. But was it simply fate that dealt him such a foul blow, or was it the woman? We'll return presently with Act Two. first act, Simon Ashton photographed Ariane Delaunay, known to him as Anne Logan. But when the negatives were developed, her face bore the traces of tears, starting to form in the early shots, in the later ones, streaming down her face. Was this a trick of fate or of Ariane Delaunay? William Congreve, the playwright, once wrote, Women are like tricks by sleight of hand, which to admire we should not understand. Nevertheless, we shall try to shed some light on the subject. He was furious. He was livid. That's mild. Nothing but tears, tears, tears. He must have thought he was losing his mind. He thought I'd played some sort of trick on him, a practical joke or something. Well, hadn't you? No. No, it's not a trick. It's not a joke. Not at all. It's just something that happens. Wow. I know people who can cry on cue. Lots of the actresses who come around here looking for work, they can cry any time they want to. Oh, I can't. I didn't even want to. But you did. No, Mona. I didn't. I'm sure I didn't. Then I don't understand it at all. Neither do I. I just know it happened. Well, what's next? Uh, we're not going to leave it this way now, are we? I have an appointment for another sitting this morning. Oh, well, that's good. It ought to be interesting. 
tell me something. Do you... Do you feel anything for him still after all these years? I don't know yet what I feel. At least I don't know everything I feel. He was the first. Yes. And you were very young. Seventeen. I'm so sorry, Ariane. Thank you. Perhaps everything will come right in the end. I hope so. We can only try. Yes. Well, I better get going. He's expecting me. Ariane, if you have any trouble with him of any kind, let me know. Call me right away. After all, he owes me $47,000 in alimony. And if it comes to that, I can put him in jail. Remember that, will you? I'll remember. But I don't think it'll come to that. I really don't. Good morning. Thank you. Well, let's get started, huh? Whenever you like. Do I move around the way I did yesterday? That's the way I work. Then that's what I'll do. And when I say now... That means you're taking the picture. Yeah, yeah. Something wrong? I, uh... I don't want a repetition of what happened yesterday. Oh, I don't think that could happen again. It had better not. It had darn well better not happen again. Well... Wait. Now stand still, right there, like that, in that light. You have a fascinating face, you know that? Oh... I don't think so. Don't be simpering and shy. Is that what I'm being? You don't mind my touching your face, do you? I'd rather you didn't. Hasn't anyone ever told you how fascinating it is? Someone did. Once. I should hope so. More than once. And more than one someone. Just once. Just someone. A long time ago. How long? Twenty years. Well, then it's high time someone told you again. Don't. Don't do that. Oh, come on. Please do not touch me. Well, all right. I thought you wanted me to. I didn't. And I don't. So let's get to work, okay? Look, I have an idea. How would it be if you let me say now instead of you? I don't do it that way. But yesterday you thought I cheated, played a trick on you. You did. So this time, let me say now. Look right into the camera and say it. What about the lights? You don't know when the light is right. I'll sit on the windowsill. I'll be in full daylight. I don't do any retouching. I don't want you to. Every crease, every pore, every wrinkle is going to show. I don't care. How old are you? Thirty-seven. And you really don't care? I want it that way. Okay. Okay, then. Sit down. Turn your face. That's it. Turn it toward the east. Let's get the full morning sun on But I want to look at you. Now look at me. Look at the street. Look at the sun. Look anywhere you like. You'll wait till I say now? I'll wait. I'll wait. All right, then. Now. Got it. (laughs) And now. 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 Well, what happened? Tell me what happened. He, uh, he made a pass at me. Oh, of course he would. I'm surprised he didn't try it the first time. It brought everything back, everything that happened in Barbados. That's where you met him? When I was 17, it was my first modeling job. And he wasn't nearly so well known, hardly known at all. Uh, That came later, after he met me. You had a lot to do with it, I imagine. Quite a lot, yes. Well, go on. I thought he was the most marvelous man. I thought he was the sun and moon and stars... 
heaven and earth. Well, you know. Yes, I know very well. I had the exact same sensations myself. I was doing a job for a bathing suit concern. Bikinis had come in and I, uh... Well, my figure was very good in those days. Nothing the matter with it now. Anyway, I don't know if you know the Caribbean beaches, especially the ones in Barbados. Most especially Heron Beach. The sand is not white. No, it's almost pink. Uh, yes, a sort of pinky beige, so alluring, so... so feminine. Absolutely natural, but just the least bit artificial. Not a bad definition of femininity. And the water at Heron Beach. There are no high waves because there's a breakwater a few hundred yards out, so the sea is always calm there. He and I went swimming at three o'clock in the morning one time. The moon was bright and the stars were close and the sea was like a, a cradle rocking us gently. It was warm and calm and I wished it would never end. When did it end? When the job was over, of course. Of course. And it ended right there on Heron Beach. I was standing there watching the flying fish and staring at that watery cradle that had held us both that night. And he showed up. Quite by accident, it turned out. Like a fool, I thought at first he'd made a sentimental journey to that particular place. But uh, no, no, he was just looking for a little native boy whose picture he'd taken. What did he say? I don't remember and nothing worth remembering. Just, uh... Hello, you catching the plane to Trinidad? In those days, you had to fly to Trinidad to catch the plane back to New York. I said, yes, I was. And he said, oh, too bad. He was staying on to photograph the little boy again. And I stood there with my mouth open, but no words coming out. And then he saw the little boy and he ran off down the beach calling to him. And I stood and watched him running catching up to the little boy, kneeling down to talk to him. And I wanted to die. Oh, my dear. Oh, uh, forgive me. Uh, uh, Mona Ashton. Mona, this is Simon. Thank God you're there. Oh, where else would I be? Mona, get hold of that Ann Logan person. Me? Why should I get hold of her? Because I don't know how. I don't know where she lives. I haven't got her phone number. Well, neither do I. But you must have. What on earth's the matter? I never want to see that woman again. Oh, Simon, you're not making any sense. Never mind about me. Just get hold of her and tell her to stay away from me. I've told you I can't do that. Uh, look, Simon, I'm coming over there. I don't like the way you're talking. Never mind how I'm talking. I'm leaving right now. I don't want to. Just the same I'm coming. And don't try shutting me out. I still have a key to your studio. Left over from, shall we say, brighter days? Mona, don't do it. I'm begging. See in a few minutes. Well, something happened yesterday. That's for sure. <laughs> Let me in, Simon. Uh, come on, let me in. Go away, Mona. I am not going to go away. I, I don't like the way you sounded on the phone, and I don't like the way you sound now. Leave me alone. No, I won't. Simon, I have a key. I can let myself in, but I'd rather you open the door. Come on, open the door. Simon... Good Lord, you look awful. What do you want? You look ghastly. You're not staying, Mona. Well, just for a little while. We uh, have to have a little talk. We've got nothing to talk oh, about. Oh, but we have. Uh, where are the pictures of Anne Logan? They didn't come out. 
You expect me to believe that? I don't care what you believe. A photographer like you can't make a simple commercial composite. Nobody in the business would believe that. You wouldn't tell anyone, would you? Oh, I'd tell everyone. It'll be the story of the week. It's that woman's fault. Really? I understand you made a pass at her. She told you? How else would I know? It wasn't much of a pass. Mm. One of your minor efforts. It won't happen again. Because I'm not going to see her again. Oh, yes, you are. Not on your life. Not for a million bucks. How about 47,000 bucks? You mean... I mean I'll cancel all the back alimony. You would? I'll do better than that. I'll waive all rights to any future payments. Why would you do that? What do you care about this dame's composite? I'm stubborn. Tenacious. You know that about me, Simon. I want those pictures, and I mean to have them. Well? I, I can't, Mona. I, I, I can't do it. There, there's something about her that... Nothing comes out right. I, I've tried twice now. Nothing came out right either time. Try once more. I can't. Try. The third time, everything will be perfect. Um, where are the proofs from the last sitting? In there. Uh, on the rack, I think. Mm, I'm going to take a look. You don't want to do that, Mona. How bad can it be? You don't know. You don't know. They, oh, here they are. You see? You see? Are these the ones? Uh, well, they don't look... Uh... I told you. I told you not to look at these them. These cannot be the right ones. They are. They are. I told well, these, you. These are just pictures of a beach, a stretch of sand. I know. I know. A beautiful wide beach and a calm sea beyond. I know. And here, here's the figure of a man, a man running. Look, he's running toward a little boy. The war between the sexes is as old as humankind. Joined in love on Monday, they can be ripped apart on Tuesday. They can cling together at night and bare their teeth in the morning. As great as their potential for love, equally great is their capacity for hate. Both cannot win, but both can lose. And the battle goes on. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Congreve, whom we quoted before, and who lived about 300 years ago, knew more than a little about the battle between the sexes. In 1697, he wrote these lines. Heaven has no rage like love to hatred turned, nor hell a fury like a woman scorned. Mr. Congreve, across the centuries, we salute you. Simon was beside himself, positively beside himself. You really saw the beach, the sea? Just the way you described it. And the little boy? And the man, running. It's working. Actually working. Yes, but what's working? How does it work? Will I see him again? We haven't come to the end of this business. You'll see him again. You'll have another sitting. Yes, Stanley. This is Ashton. Your husband's on the phone again. Oh, didn't you tell him I'm out? He's been calling every two or three minutes. This is about the 20th time. Oh, all right. Put him on. Thank you, Mrs. Ashton. He's on three. Hello, Simon. Mona, where have you been? In a meeting. Why? Mona, I can't go through with it. Tell that girl not to come. Simon, you promised me this one last sitting. I can't help it. I, I just know I can't go through with it. My nerves are shot, Mona. I'm afraid to be alone in the same room with her. I can't go through with it. You won't have to be alone with her. I'll be there. That ought to quiet your nerves, don't you think? It might. I don't know. Sure it will. We'll be right over. That's that. Come on, let's go. I, I want her to sit in that chair. I want her to sit very still in that chair. 
All right, Anne. Of course. It'll be a very conventional portrait. The kind that they used to do before you were born. I just look straight into the camera. Now. Yes. Okay, that's it. That's all. You can get up now. We're through. Well, you can't just leave it at just one shot, Simon. Yes, I can. I promised you a sitting, and I've kept my promise, so now you can get out of here. You promised her a composite. A composite has at least four. Mona, it's all right. Really, it's all right. You're sure? I'm sure. I have what I want. Well, if you're sure... Uh, Simon, when can we see the proof? I don't know. Tomorrow? All right. We'll come by um, early in the morning. Understood? Yes, come on in. Hello, Ariane. Mona, are we ready? Well, now, look, sit down for a while. Stanley's been trying to reach Simon, but he's not answering his phone. You think he's not there? I have no idea, but don't worry. We'll track him down. Well, I can't help worrying. Anything might have shown up on that film... You mean you don't know what's on it? It could be anything. Don't you think it's about time you told me how you manage this thing? I think I have a right to know. Of course you have. And I'll tell you everything I can. I wish you would. Well, I stood on Heron Beach that last day and watched him running toward the little boy. I saw him stoop down, and he and the boy talked for a minute or two. And then they went off together, hand in hand. After a while, I turned and looked at that tranquil, immulable sea, as though I expected it to tell me something. But there it was, calm as ever, and quiet. And his last words kept repeating themselves in my head. Taking the plane to Trinidad? Oh, I'm staying on for a while. Nice to have known you. Well, they didn't say have a good life in those days, or I'm sure he'd have said that before he took off, as though there was any life left for me without him. Oh, Ariane, I'm so sorry. What did you do? I, uh... I didn't do anything. I couldn't think of anything to do. Mm. But eventually, you... You must have done something. Eventually, one of the fishermen found me. They told me later I was catatonic. Who told you that? The doctors at the asylum. You went into an asylum? Well, I didn't go. They took me and put me there. Of course. It was very good of them, really. And I started to get better... Little by little. More myself, if you know what I mean. I think I do. We say that so often, don't we? I'm not myself. Well, I wasn't myself. And more than that, I didn't know who I was. You mean you had amnesia? No, not exactly. I could remember lots of things. My name, my age, how much money I had in the bank... Let me pour you some coffee. Go on. If you feel like it. I do feel like it. And I owe it to you. Oh, no, don't worry about what you owe me. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, when I started to get better... When I wasn't just staring at the asylum walls the way I stared at the sea. That placid, forever, unchanging sea. Yes. I started to cry. I hadn't cried before that, you see, but once I started, I couldn't stop. I cried all the time. Drink your coffee. I woke up in the morning crying. And I went to sleep that way. I can remember seeing tears fall into my food at the dinner table. They wouldn't stop. Oh, Lord. I hope I'm not going to start again now. That, that would be terrible. No, it wouldn't. 
Anyway, uh, one day I went for a walk on the grounds. I wasn't crying hard that day. I, I hadn't for quite a while. I mean, not the big heaving sobs and shrieks of pain like at first. Just the silent weeping. Like in the photograph. Yes, like that. I just felt hopeless. Utterly hopeless. There would never be any joy in my life again. And you were 17? Oh, no. By that time, I was uh, 22. 22? Oh, Ari, Ari. Well, I had to put in five years more after that before they'd let me out. But on this particular day, it seemed there was nothing to do but just call the whole thing off. I'd never be myself again. I'd always be this stranger I turned into. So I stole a knife from the dining room and put it in my pocket. You were going to... I don't know if I was or not. Maybe it was just a gesture. Psychotics are very prone to gestures. Anyway, I was wandering around the gardens when I saw a man. He wasn't one of the patients. I knew that. I knew all the patients intimately, so he must have been a visitor, somebody from out there where people led lives. That's the way I thought of them. People out there where Simon was leading his life. I saw this man walking toward me, this stranger. And in his hands, he was holding a camera. A camera? It was a simple instant phototype. They were kind of new then. And when he was just a few feet away from me, he raised the camera and... Click. He took a picture of you? I guess he thought it would be amusing to take a picture of the crazy lady who cried all the time. Oh, how... How loathsome. Yes, it was, wasn't it? What did you do? Nothing. I just stood there and let him take his picture. I watched him while he slid it out of his camera. I saw him look at it. Then at me. Then back at the picture. And then... Yes. Then the most awful look came over his face. It was a look of horror and, and disbelief. He dropped the picture on the ground and turned and ran. And you? I watched him run. And I realized I wasn't crying anymore. I went over and picked up the picture off the ground and looked at it. It wasn't a picture of me at all. What was it? It was a picture of the knife I had in my pocket. And there was blood dripping from it. But what? Uh, how? I don't know what, and I don't know how. All I know is that somehow I transferred my feelings onto film. Not me. What I was feeling. Amazing. Uh, it's frightening. I never tried it again. Till now. Come on. We're going to the studio. It's not here. It's simply not here. Well, it's got to be somewhere. Well, we've ransacked the whole place. Do you think he could have destroyed... Oh, it wouldn't be like him to destroy something he'd done. Still, in this case, it might be different. Depending what came out on the film. Do you remember what you were feeling when he took the picture? No, it wouldn't work that way. Why am I not? Because it's not my conscious thoughts that go onto the film. It's the deep ones, the ones I don't even know about myself. At the asylum, I thought the knife with the blood came out on the picture because I wanted to kill myself, but it wasn't that at all. It was that man, that strange... Oh, look, let, let's look one more time. Just what do you think you're doing? Oh, Simon. We were... We were looking for the proof. I've been trying to reach you all morning. Oh, well, I was out. I know that. 
It came right down to what I couldn't develop the film myself. I had to have someone else do it. So I took it to a friend of mine, and, and he... You got it? Have you got it? Oh, yes, I've got it. Right here. Me, we, we'd like to see it, Simon. Here, take it. Thank you. What? It's the picture of a... A gun. Simon. It's happened again, isn't it? But why a gun? I have no idea. Do you want it back? What would I want with it? You'd better take it. Here. It's yours. What'll I do with it? A straight-on shot of a muzzle of a gun? What good is it to me? Simon! Simon, what happened? Mona? He's fainted, hasn't he? I don't know. Simon? Say something. Look at me. Look at me. Ariane. Ariane Delaney. Well, I've talked to the doctor. Yes, and? Simon's in shock. May take him a while to come out of it. But there's nothing really wrong, not his heart or anything like that. No. Ariane. Yes, Mona? We know, of course, that Simon thought the gun went off. The gun in the picture. He thought he'd been shot. Yes. Ariane, did you hear the gun go off? Why do you ask? Because I did. I distinctly heard a gunshot. Did you really? So did I. Very. Well, goodbye, Mona. Goodbye, Ariane. Don't forget to write. What chance has a man against a woman once her love has turned to hate and she has fixed her mind on his destruction? Very little, I should think. And when two women join forces and conspire against him, well, the poor creature is a goner for sure. For with patience and cunning, the pair of jungle cats will seek him out, stalk him down, and, if they want to, kill and devour him. I'll be back shortly. Sweet is revenge. You all know those three words. But do you know that they were written better than 150 years ago by a romantic English poet, Lord Byron? That they appear in the first canto of his long poem titled Don Juan? And do you know that these three famous words are followed by three others, not so famous, so that the whole line reads, Sweet is revenge. Especially to women. Our cast included Terry Keene, Grace Matthews, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Should have left a light on. Who needed it? With the moon. Mm, it's just gone behind a cloud. Can't you find the door to our stateroom? Well, if I can't, I know my wife has cat's eyes. <laughs> oh, here we are. Ladies first. Uh-huh. First I'll find a light. There we are. Now. Oh. <laughs> I carry you across the threshold. Oh, my darling. It's all such heaven, such rapture. Here we go. Watch the ball, cat. Now, the last thing I'd ever do is drop you. My... Oh. Oh. Are you out of your mind? Who, who are you? When... Oh. Oh. Jim. Uh. Jim. He acted like he wanted to kill us. Who was that? Jim. Oh, good Lord, you're bleeding. What happened, darling? 
Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.